In this video, we're going to look at the manual measure capabilities of color space, which is where uh, measurements can be made of uh, any given display using a probe, either by taking single measurements, continuous measurements, or uh, a sequence of measurements using patches defined either by the sliders um, or by um, a, a set of presets loaded into the system. So before we start, we'll just populate the uh, screen here with a few of our uh, chosen graphs so that we can actually get a feel for what's happening uh, with uh, the different uh, primary colors, uh, the uh, gamma EOTF, differential EOTF and RGB balance and we'll uh, pop out a patch window. Uh, we're going to use a patch window just central here so that you can see everything that's going on. Uh, normally we would be running that full screen with the patch size defined by the settings in um, the settings menu. So we've got a, in this case, an L32 patch size, we a black background color, um, and we are using a patch scale that is the default 0255 data range uh, because we're using a display that is is uh, working in a data range uh, rather than video range but we obviously could uh, set that to video range or um, super white video um, or even set it manually but we're going to go back to our data range now at the moment we're targeting rec 709 and we've got a preset minimum uh, and maximum values uh, both for the profile data because a black and white patch are set automatically when you start a new profile um, as well as the target being set to 0 um, and 100. Within the manual measure menu we have um, a zoom widget and a bars widget. The zoom widget shows how far off the colour is um, compared to the target, which is always the centre, and the bars widget shows the similar information but as um, RGB or HSL bars, uh, including a luminance bar and a delta E bar. Below that we have some basic information on the target colour space. We have um, the min and max values for the target colour space as well as the actual min and max for the profile. Uh, with the uh, contrast ratio data. Um, we also have the target Y uh, luminance and XY values and also the actual and then what the error is either shown as a percentage deviation um, or as a value deviation. The test patterns opens up a window that gives you access to a number of different test patterns that replace the patch generator. So again, a double click to make them full screen. So here we have a probe alignment test pattern. And then we have uh, contrast and brightness, which are both flashing patterns. So you can see uh, where clipping is occurring either in the highlights with contrast or the lowlights with brightness. And then you have more specialized patterns such as um, ANSI contrast in two different forms. And we have the more specialized uh, corner box test patterns, which enable you to check for uh, display contrast on displays that have uh, dynamic backlights. So you have corner test pattern one and corner test pattern two. And we'll be adding more images such as uh, black and white ramps and uh, Granger images uh, as uh, time progresses. Setting the test patch colour can be done using the sliders, which here are locked together to give us a grayscale. Or via presets, which can be loaded as a CSV list, uh, so something like grayscale large, which gives us 33 patches of grayscale plus red, green and blue primaries. More importantly, the presets uh, can be user defined to match the uh, CMS of any given display, uh, specifically consumer televisions. So for example, the display we're using here um, has a 10 step grayscale uh, within its internal color management. So we can use uh, Excel, if we open up 
an example of this to generate a simple 10-step patch set, which we have here. So we have 10 steps of grayscale from black to white plus red, green, blue primaries uh, using a slightly lower than 100% value, which is uh, what we tend to do uh, when we're setting a gamut uh, rather than using the full 255 where clipping may occur. But again, that could be a, a, any value that you choose. So if we were to uh, load that in, there we have a 10 step grayscale again with our uh, RGB primaries. And we can now use the patches uh, to directly change the uh, actual patch color um, or go back to our slider. If we uh, unlock the slider controls, we can use these to um, set any alternate patch color. So stepping between them, we can move to any particular color we wish in a relatively quick space of time, either through the use of the sliders to select any particular color, uh, either with or without uh, the sliders interlocked, or through the preset um, patch lists. So if we actually want to take some measurements from a display, either to profile and assess it, or for actual calibration work, um, we can choose the color for the main patch window, connect to our probe, in this case an i1 display pro um, integration time of 0.75 um, all in one mode for sync uh, no extra delay and at the moment intelligent integration off for a very particular reason uh, which we will now look into so with our patch selected we can now take a measurement and we will see that the white point as measured is relatively close to target and this can be seen in all the graphs. Um, so if we zoom into the CIE here, for example, you can see that the measured point compared to the target um, is slightly off and low, and that is heading towards blue, uh, which we obviously can see when we look at the uh, overall CIE, and is shown in the zoom widget. You can see the cross is slightly off center towards blue, and in the bars widget, where actually it's telling us that uh, it's slightly low in luminance, um, and as part of that, it is the red low that is making the luminance low. So if we were to raise red slightly on the display's controls, um, that would cancel out the fact that the display is a little bit too blue. Um, the, the amount of error we're seeing here is probably below the threshold of most uh, TV uh, controls um, to correct. But it gives you an idea as to uh, what the graphs themselves do. And now we'll take a, a measure of black. And you can see that the initial result is all zeros with a really huge blue cast uh, being shown on the uh, RGB balance. And that's obviously because the probe has failed to read um, at the black level that this display has with the present uh, integration time that we have set here. But we're going to use intelligent integration, which means that any reading below 0.1 nit will be read multiple times with increasing integration times until two consecutive readings give the same values. And then obviously we know that, that is the probe reading uh, accurately. So if we go back and just remeasure black, you can see now we get a set of actual values and the measured point is fairly consistent with what we'd expect being a bit blue from target as shown by the zoom widget. So this shows you that we have the same blue offset and the RGB bars in chroma only mode show us that we are high luminance because our target luminance is zero, uh, high blue, um, low green and lower red. Um, obviously the luminance is now needs to be updated to the actual measured values. So we will just go in and click that. And now we can see that our luminance error is, is zero, but we have a chrominance error. If we turn off chroma only, it shows that actually there's no error. That's because the delta E is so low that the color error is negligible. But obviously we know there is a color error and we do want to see that. So chroma only gives us that option. We can now just run through the patches uh, either with auto advance, which will measure each patch in turn using intelligent integration 
below values of 0.1 nit, the CIE graphs will update as the measurements are made, while the 1D graphs will update uh, at the finish. And then we can see that we have our EOTF, we have our differential EOTF, as well as the RGB balance, and we've got our zoomed in uh, graphs here showing us our actual measured red, green and blue compared to target. We can now use the patch sets to actually look at each measurement in turn. So we can see the error either in the zoom widgets um, or in the values or in any of the graphs. Um, and every time we click a color, it will go to that particular patch. And if we want, we can go back to any given patch. So for example, say um, patch one, which is the 10% patch here, and say, well, let's re-measure that to see if the original measurement was accurate. We can even step back into the uh, probe options. And although we are reading here um, a luminance of 0.5 nits, so we are above our intelligent integration threshold, we could either increase that or just increase the uh, integration time, go back and measure, and now it, it will do a longer integration of the 10% patch, which is not hugely different in this instance. And we can go back and put that back to our usual 0.75 we've been using. More importantly, we can use this um, using repeat measurements to start to make adjustments using the display's own color management system. So if we look at, say, the 80% uh, patch, um, we look at it in um, standard mode, we can see that there is um, uh, too high red, too high green, too high blue because the luminance is out and obviously we can see that in the target and actual where the error is predominantly in the luminance with a small error in the X and Y values. But we can use the display's own controls to adjust the colour until we get something more accurate. So if we put this into uh, repeat and measure we're now going to get continuous updates on the 80% patch and we can modify the CMS by bringing down red and green and blue until we get what is a much more accurate result. We can see we've still got a bit of a, a delta E error and if we zoom right in on the uh, CIE, we can see there's the, the patch being measured and you can see obviously that there is some instability either in the display or in the probe. In this case, it's, uh, it is in the display. But we can modify that until we get the values as low as possible within the limits of the granularity of the controls of the display. And we can step through each patch in turn, making these adjustments manually and then run an entire auto advanced sequence through to get a, a full update of the entire uh, status of the display. If your display has um, HSL controls, you can obviously set the widget in to HSL and then when you make those changes on the display itself, the two will align and we also can change the patch controls from RGB into HSL sliders as well.